Tim, I'm really excited about the start of today's show. Very excited. Oh, yes. Anticipation. You know I have been because for days I've been telling you, I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. You're very you're very good at keeping secrets, I have to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not that good. No, you're very good at telling me that you've got a secret that you're keeping, but then you're very good at keeping <laughs> <laughs> the secret. You, know, you wait till you find out a secret I've got for a couple of months' time, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me fair. tell you about today's secret. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. All right. People know we are obsessed with this advertising jingle, The Sofa Shop, from the 1980s in Adelaide that stretched through right until only about a year ago. And everyone knows we have people doing covers of them and stuff like that here on the show. Yep. Now, on Christmas Day, we released an episode where we interviewed and went to the studio with the original composer and also the singer of the sofa shop quentin Ayres and carmen scalzi man i know all this why, why are you telling me this come on get to the <laughs> you know i was there man <laughs> seriously i wouldn't be surprised if you've forgotten i'm always amazed at how you forget things that have happened on the show <laughs> you probably forget we went to the studio anyway no i remember keep going sorry right. this is for New listeners, yes, go ahead. Yep. This is for new listeners or forgetful listeners. <laughs> so yes. anyway, in that in that episode, there was a throwaway comment that was made towards the end of the show, and I want to get out the uh, the harps of memory and strum the harps of memory and let people listen to this exchange. Here's what was said. Big Ben has Big Ben strikes midnight. You could re- <laughs> you could change the song that the bell makes. Can someone please send us? Can someone send us a cover of the sofa shop done with giant bells? We haven't got one of those yet. With big That's Ben bells. Bong bong bong. <laughs> bong bong bong. <laughs> Whatever played that every on the air. That, oh, geez. And do you know what it should be? It should be, you know, bong bong bong. Bong bong bong. And then when Quentin does his little, what did you call it? Little lead fill. That could be little with fill. a little tingy bell. A little. <laughs> All right, Tim, here we go. The moment has arrived. Spoiler alert, we're not going to hear the sofa shop played on Big Ben. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but here is an email I received. Hi, Brady. On the 19th of February at 5pm, the sofa shop was performed in Century Tower on the University of Florida campus in Gainesville, Florida. That's a great way to start an email, by the way, Derek. Is- <laughs> he's, he's, like, he's, he's, he's told me what I need to know, so I'll keep reading. The email continues. My name is Derek Nirenberg, and I'm a choral conducting graduate student at the University of Florida, although my primary instrument is saxophone. I arranged this version of the sofa shop for Carillon, the system of playable bells within the tower, which was performed by my friend Jake Hutchinson, an oboist who is learning to play carillon. He's not a listener of the podcast, but is incredibly helpful and was willing to perform my arrangement. Please note the twinkling of the high bells in that guitar section as requested. Right, right. Tim, here comes your, here comes your video. Here it is, Century Tower, carillon bells. That is awesome. That is really something. Oh, that's great. Oh, that is incredible. Magnificent. Magnificent. God, it's the it's the little dignified pauses in between each you know sort of line that gives it that lovely statesman like beauty. <laughs> oh. A little bit of information about the Century Tower for uh, those who don't know and haven't seen the video. This is uh, 157 feet tall. That's nearly 50 meters. 
Yeah. The Carillon, excuse my pronunciation, I've, I've seen various ways to pronounce Carillon, I'm just going with that. It has 61 bells and ranges a span of five octaves. The Carillon is played using 61 keys or batons for the hands and 25 pedals for the feet. The musician sits in a small room just below the bell chamber. The entire mm-hmm. Carillon weighs 57, nearly 58,000 pounds. That's 26,000 kilograms. The smallest bell in the tower, Carillon, plays a high C, and that weighs a meagre 6 kilograms and has a diameter of about 6 inches. But the largest bell plays a low A sharp, and that is 5 feet tall and weighs about 7,000 pounds. That's 3,200 kilograms. And that is 5 feet and 9 inches in diameter. So, you, so you know, a, a person wide. That's oh, a sofa wide. A it's, sofa it's wide. wide. <laughs> <laughs> in, indeed, indeed, a sofa wide. Wow, that's really something. I wonder how he came to do it. What's his role there? Does he have to manoeuvre or bribe someone, or was it was he rostered on for that day? I figured out a bit more about what's going on. Basically, the tower does chime every hour, but they also, I think, have a couple of performances a day for people who know how to play it or are learning to play it. Yep. So obviously, uh, Jake, the oboist who's learning to play Carol, you know, had a shift. He got one of the sessions where he could play a few bits of music. And Derek, his mate, our civilian, said, oh, will you play this one for me? Mm. Uh, and, and Jake agreed. And it turns out that Derek, our friend, did kind of write the music for the carillon, you know, like adapted the music. What does he say? He arranged it. He arranged the music yep. for the carillon. And I have got a copy of that arrangement. I'll make Maybe I'll make that the Patreon bonus material today if you want to go and have a look at it. But he also played our podcast to Jake. And Jake heard that reference to how I said I wanted the little, uh, what do you call it? The lead fill, that little guitar bit. The sofa shop is your only stop for the sofa you need. I wanted that to be played on some little tingly bells in between. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't written into the arrangement. That was uh, Jake freestyling just for us when he got to that bit. That was his little, uh, you know, little (laughs) little bit he added just for us. So... Thanks, Jake. But nice. that, I mean, that's 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 just magnificent, isn't it? I mean, what's left? Oh, well, what's left? Every time I that's think, right. <laughs> every time I think we've peaked. That that's impressive. That's a that's absolutely beautiful. I imagine they'll be playing that most days from now on. Uh, the, the vice chancellor, the president of the university, you know, looks up from his coffee, and goes, "What's that? Well, that's our new theme tune. That's marvelous. <laughs> that's the <laughs> university song." Can I just say that Jake the Oboist is one of the coolest names I've ever heard. <laughs> I'd love to have a friend called Jake the Oboist, just so I could introduce him to people. Any Oboist. I mean, there, there are too few Oboists in my life. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I do know one Oboist, um, but they're a younger person, so I won't say their name. But right. the Oboist is... Right. Um, <laughs> It's, it's just a fantastic... How old does someone have to be before you'll say their name, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> On the podcast with their, their parents' permission, I think, is probably the way it goes. Yes, yes very good. Yeah. Very good. Safeguarding. So, just one last thing. I mean, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Uh, KFC? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> well, close, actually. <laughs> I'm thinking Colonel Ships here. Oh, Wow. That's yeah. Well, okay. Yep. With one, not even a, not even a, 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 a growing body of work. With one big giant performance, straight to the top. Well, yeah, well, I, I well, think, I think sometimes Colonel ships can just be one great moment. Like, uh, like, like when someone is knighted for one single great achievement. Yeah. Like Bob Geldof with the Live Aid concert. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it wasn't a lifetime of philanthropy. It was one day, one concert, bang, knighted. Well, I think of it more like a Victoria Cross, one moment of, you know, one incredible moment in the heat of the moment. Like, you know, a moment of right. bravery. <laughs> <laughs> of bravery. A moment of bravery or playing bells in a tower. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, I, 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 um, I, I'm happy to go along with your nomination. I, yeah. I concur. I think this goes above and beyond. Yeah. So well congratulations done. to 
Are, are we are we bestowing it upon both Derek and Jake, the oboist? Or? I, think, I think we have to, really. I think we have to. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Jake would have got he would have made Colonel Status just on his name. He yeah. just had to email him. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jake the Oboist. But the thing about Jake is he doesn't even listen to the podcast. No, no, I know. <laughs> and he's <That's> Colonel. <laughs> yes, this- well, he hopefully he will from now on. Maybe that's how we can get more listeners. We <laughs> civilly we start bestowing colonelships left, right, and centre. <laughs> I mean, just to oboists. Just yeah. to, we could get oboists everywhere. <laughs> I wonder if we have more listeners than there are oboists in the world. Wow, that's interesting. Mm. Are there more than ten oboists in the world? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, it would be good to find out all. It would be wonderful to track all the oboists mm. and to um, yeah, do you know what I mean? And to to give them uh, something from the unmade podcast so that we can say that every oboist on earth is is. At least heard or listened, maybe with curiosity, hmm. to the Unmade podcast. That would be maybe we've just got to get into the oboist like subreddit and just start like really, you know, pumping out the links. I do love the oboe. It's a gosh, it's beautiful, it's but right. uh, yeah, it's underappreciated. Right. Mm. Yeah, it'd be in my top. It'd be in my top ten woodwind instruments. <laughs> Would it? <laughs> Is it a woodwind instrument? I don't even know. <laughs> yes, right, because <laughs> it has a reed. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> That joke landed then. <laughs> what's up the top, man? What's your what's My your favourite woodwind? Favorite? Oh, mm. look. I don't know. There's just so many to choose from. <laughs> well, Derek's a saxophonist, so is it the saxophone? Or? I don't know. I think the saxophone's a bit mainstream for me. I like my more niche ones. I like my niche woodwind. Mm. Hang on. Let me just Google woodwind instruments. <laughs> Google <laughs> Mine literally is the clarinet. I was just thinking. Clarinet? The clarinet's all right. Oh, I love the clarinet. Oh, yes. The bagpipes are a woodwind instrument. Oh, there you go. Yeah, of course. Hmm. I do prefer double reed to single reed instruments myself. So, Because <laughs> um. you can read quickly while you talk. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to go past the bassoon. The bassoon, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, mm. I don't want to... Anyway. <laughs> now I come to think of it, I think the oboist that I alluded to earlier may actually be a bassoonist. Right. But I... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Which is even more fun to say. Jake I'm... the bassoonist. <laughs> <laughs> Brady the bassoonist. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. That's nice. Oh, that's I great. can't believe I didn't get that as my Twitter handle. Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> At least that's our hover I'd taken care of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Now, as we transition away from this segment, let's have uh, Jake, the oboist, arranged by Derek Nirenberg, play us out on the University of Florida Century Tower, Carolyn Bells. <laughs> Nice to bring a bit of class onto the podcast every now and then, isn't it? It is. To sit at high table. Marvelous. It is. It is. All right. An idea for a podcast. Oh, yes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I've, uh, I've got something. I've got one I want to run by you. Oh, yeah. As is so often the case, this idea has been brought about by my text conversations during the week with you because <laughs> you're the only person I have text conversations with. <laughs> um, <laughs> I haven't wondered that. Do you text with other people like you text with me? But you you don't. No. Oh man, I'm a I'm a I'm a one text guy kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do because you sent me some jokey picture the other day and said, oh sorry, that was meant for someone else. And I'm like, oh what? You make jokes with other people. That's right. It was it was um I accidentally said to to Brad instead of oh, it was intended for Brad, and I sent it to Brady because surprise, surprise, you were at the top of my text list, oh. so it automatically. Went. I was I was devastated by that text, Tim. That was the text equivalent of lipstick on your collar. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> it has been a long time since I have otherwise text um, mm-hmm. Brad, so Brady is the the go to guest text on my phone. That's uh, for sure. All right. Well, anyway. I promise, man. I promise. <laughs> It meant nothing. Take it was me just, back. It meant nothing. It was just one joke. <laughs> um, anyway, one of the things that we've been texting about lately is in your more serious professional capacity as the as the minister 
of a church, you have in recent times, along with other people at the church, I believe, been putting together like a sort of a strategic plan. Is that the name for it? What would you call yes, it? Yes, it is. A strategic plan, yeah. I've been referring it to it as a strategic vision. Right. But, you know, we can go into this and okay. no, that's good. No, clarify that's even a little better. bit more that's as even, we go. That's, <laughs> that's even better. That's even better. So, and um, obviously, you know, this is a something that you've been working on for a while and you sent, occasionally would send me a document just for my input and sort of say, you know, do you think this is too much jargon and what do you think of this and that? And it was very interesting. And I know you've recently launched it and congratulations to you and everyone involved. And I hope it goes really well. It's all very, it's all very interesting and an important part, important thing for any organisation. So... Now, obviously, when one I can is- hear a however, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, when one is putting something like this together in any capacity, there's a fine line to be walked between doing the right thing, getting it all right, and doing the best for your organisation, and falling into the sort of black hole of corporate speak and jargon and oh, ridiculousness. Yes, and it's very it's a it's a risky thing. Obviously, I don't know it was something you were concerned about, which is probably why you were occasionally texting me about it and getting some input. Absolutely, yes. So my idea for a sort of a podcast, or what I'm going to talk about now, just totally steps over that line and goes all the way <laughs> into right. corporate silliness. My idea is called Hindsight 2030. A strategic vision for the unmade podcast. <laughs> <laughs> for those who don't know that Tim's surname is Hein, that's a little joke I've made there as well. Hindsight 2030. Mm, mm. <laughs> Hindsight that's 2030, nice. a strategic vision for the unmade podcast. The idea being that over a number of weeks and months, maybe we should be thrashing out ideas and a vision for where we want to take the podcast, you know, in the next 10 years or so. Um <laughs> I've written, <laughs> I've written a bit of a statement here, Tim, to help get us on the right path and know what we're trying to do. So I thought maybe I could read that to you, if I may. Well, that's jumping ahead of the process, really, man. We should stop by, you know, just fleshing out, putting some general ideas, blue skying. That's what uh, this is for. This is just to set the tone before we, before we, you know, get into that. Oh, okay. This is just to get all the right, ball rolling. Right. This isn't like, you know, nothing. Nothing's uh, decided until we've done a full consultation. Of obviously. Well, that's not, well, let me hang on. Let me get get out some butcher's paper and lay it out on the table. <laughs> <laughs> some coloured pencils and post-it notes on a whiteboard. Butcher's papers that's number right. file. Here we go. Yeah. All right. In these unprecedented and challenging times, the podcast ecosystem is evolving in ways never thought possible. It is important we align our vision with the needs of stakeholders and deep dive into synergies which will deliver a greater return on their listening investment. Yep. While continuing to utilise our core competencies and seeking holistic outcomes, we should pivot to sustainable spoon solutions, <laughs> unpack next generation sofa shop covers, and output cutting edge content creation that moves the needle in meaningful ways. As a collective, we must lean into the analytics and big data, thus continuing an unmade podcast narrative that delivers an impactful journey while always maintaining bandwidth that allows us to circle back and leverage other disruptive opportunities within our <laughs> hyper-local wheelhouse. <laughs> Going forward, our digital transformation should break down silos and deliver a paradigm shift in the world of podcast curation and audio <clears throat> micro-influencing, while never undervaluing the human capital and audience dialogue that will make us a catalyst for change. <laughs> well, that is word perfect. That is it. That's done. <laughs> done. I've never done. said this before, but yeah. the process is not required. <laughs> that is that is the process. All right. Okay, here are, the, here are a list of words that I particularly loved as you said that. I was just writing them down firstly. <laughs> Oh, I hope it's a long list because I use loads. <laughs> there is. There's a lot. I just thought I'll just I'll, I'll remember that one because that's a good one. But then I ended up I've got a, I've got about eight here. Okay. So stakeholder, I yep. love that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Stakeholders definitely. Yeah. And so forth. Pivot. I love mm -hmm. the idea. <laughs> yep. Pivot. Such a fantastic. We're gonna do something different. We're gonna pivot in this direction. Yep. Outcomes. Yep. Which is probably the most the <laughs> banal word in the history of the English language. Yeah. <laughs> Every episode is an outcome. There's a narrative and journey. They go together like, <laughs> ooh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh. Th there's the... Is that all you got? No, no. Keep going. I'm still going here, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unpacking the options, that is. Mm. Disruption. So that's mm -hmm. a bit more of a recent one, isn't it? This sort mm -hmm. of disruptive industry. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. 
Yep. Right. Um, uh, silos, breaking down silos. <laughs> yep. Which is, I don't know if that's so much a strategic planning as a sort of a, you know, a middle management one. Oh, look, all these departments are working in silos here. And uh, look, I think there's Catalyst. That's a that's a an obvious one. Obvious. I mean, that almost you know you put that on the board before you begin the process. Yeah. But the big, I think, the, the granddaddy of them all is paradigm shift. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds even better when you say it like that. Because it feels the the wonderful thing about paradigm shift is you feel like something's happened just by saying it. It's like oh, we're in a new paradigm because it's you know because <laughs> you can't measure a paradigm like it's just just by saying oh, I think we need to. You know, have a paradigm shift, and you're like, I agree. Wow, that, there we are. We're in it. We're we're in a new paradigm, just by saying it. I mean, I did try to make every single word possible <laughs> a buzzword. <laughs> um, what have I got? Well here? done. Yes, I, I went for the unprecedented and challenging times, obviously, because you yes. have to say that. Yes, and I obviously yeah. went for ecosystem, align our vision, deep dive, mm. return on investment. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Core yep. competencies. Yeah, uh, yeah. Holistic. Yeah. Uh, sustainable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yep. else we got? Here? Moving the needle. Big data. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> bandwidth. Circle back. Leverage. Hyperlocal. Uh, <laughs> wheelhouse. Uh, digital transformation. Interface. I like that. D- digital I, transformation. I, I didn't get interface in. I'm sorry, but I did get uh, curation and micro influencing. Uh, human capital. Human capital. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so anyway, as we as we move forward, which is another one uh, going move forward, forward. <laughs> yeah, as we go forward with this podcast idea, uh, can you bring any like you know ideas to the table? Because you know, having just gone through this process, if you any do's or don'ts that you learned as you actually shepherded a real world version of this, Shep- shepherded a real shepherded. world, real world, <laughs> shepherded a real world version. I love that. I didn't even mean that. I've just gone into that mode. That a- <laughs> My brain's just clicked. <laughs> <laughs> Ship it in a real world version through to completion, <laughs> through execution. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's gold. Well, you know, I actually did a bit of consulting with a, a company years ago with like nonprofits with with strategic planning, and I learned a heck of a lot. And it, this is one of those things where you learn two things. One is it's vi- it is actually vitally important, right? Because it's it's about corralling. Well, there you go. There's another word. <laughs> Our energies. Like you've got a plan and you've got to focus and you can't just do everything. So you, you do need to think through this stuff, but it's so easy for it to fall into this kind of language. I, I have to say hmm. that even as I'm checking, you know, this through with you to sort of say, does this sound like it's too internal language or do you understand? You know what I mean? All that kind of stuff. It, it's a great relief to <laughs> for your mocking texts to come back from time to time. It's like a cold shower. It's like, oh, yes, of course. You just need <laughs> need to say what's in the can. Do you ever actually change the stuff, though? Uh, well, no, I no. just feel a bit better about it. <laughs> it's just good to have a laugh. <laughs> that's right, that's right. If you were to take the consultancy further and make it like a real business for yourself, would you call it hindsight? Hindsight. It was once suggested to me that my blog site should be called Hindsight. With the S I T E, yeah, you see, yeah, yeah. website, blog site, uh, yeah. but well, I think I I own that space. Oh, in this space, space. that's another one. Oh, yeah, oh nice. and I, I tell you what, in in one part of one world I'm from, it that's used all the time, and it does drive me up the world. Instead of saying on this particular topic, they say, oh, that's a really important contribution in this space. And it drives me up the wall. Did you consider renaming your church the God Space? God Space. <laughs> <laughs> no, because the whole cosmos is God Space, man. Yes, indeed. I, could, I couldn't specify. Indeed. Can I say as well, I was thinking about the fact that we finally got to 2020 hmm. and how, um, like how, like it was just such a dream for consultants over the last five or six years working with companies saying, okay, 2020 vision. You know what I mean? That's yeah. It's just been, you know, like candy to a child being able to say, okay, what's our 2020 vision? Yeah. And it just sounds so clear and crystal and rounded and perfect. It's almost like we, we, it, it sounds like success and yeah. vision just 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 by even saying it. Oh, yeah. um, and what a great year it turned out to be. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Has there been a greater anticlimax in history? Yeah. <laughs> Not one of the consultants would have said, well, 2020 vision. 
everyone will be stuck at home. <laughs> it's like the millennium bug hit 20 years too late. It did. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So you've got, I mean, just saying 2030. Wow. That's yeah. the sort of vision that you're bringing. Yeah. You're looking. That's over multiple horizons, man. It'd be a great podcast, though, wouldn't it? Like each week, just like breaking down what we want to do. Like you know, what's it? You know, I'd love it. I'd love to. I'd love to do it. I'm- well, there are several components of it. Okay, so number one, there's like values, like core values. Values. Yeah. Oh, values. I forgot values. So that's yeah. an important one. And I wonder if if civilians would like to contribute. What are you can't have too many. You got to have three or four or maybe five at a stretch core values of the Unmade podcast. Uh, uh, well, that's easy. Sofa shop jingles. Heading towards 2030. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 there can't be. Man, man, you've jumped into content. You've got to pull back out of that pragmatic content and think values. What Underlying values. Under goods. Oh, that's right. <laughs> all right. Well, how about, how about love of advertising jingles? That's a value. Yes, yes, all that's right. that. All right. That is. That, that, that is. Yeah. But but do we want to stay with one jingle or do we want to diversify? Like, are we going to move into other jingles? <laughs> are we going to diversify going forward? Yeah, we because we need to fu- we need to future proof. Future proof. Oh, yeah. oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> the second thing you've got, like, what's your purpose mission? Like, what are we trying to do here, man? Now you might say make a <laughs> podcast, and I'd say, good answer. What? <laughs> I like it's episode seventy five. I think that's the first time we've ever asked that question. <laughs> what are we? What are we trying? To do? <laughs> we've, we've got we've got Adelaide advertising jingles being played on bell towers in Florida, and we've still never asked what we're trying to accomplish. <laughs> Can I say that was what I was set out to do? It's right from the start. I knew. <laughs> I'm not going to be happy until they're playing jingles in Florida. I want to see a picture of Tim standing in front of that tower with a big banner saying mission accomplished across it. <laughs> mission accomplished. <laughs> well, see here, this is where you start. You take that achievement and then you project it out to 2030 and you say, okay, by 2030, uh-huh. Big Ben. Oh, no, Big Ben you can't really, can you? Because Big Ben's the one big bell. But do they have... Although Tim, I must Tim, play, um, Tim, there is no cart with the unmade podcast. Okay, yeah. right. Well, man, again, you're bringing the vision. There are no bad ideas at this table. All right, I want to hear everything. This is a, this is an accepting space. By 2030, I want to hear the sofa shop jingle played on Big Ben. All right. Wow. Well, that's, that's, that's that's it. it. That is that is this kind of vision I got you in for. I can tell. I can tell you're well into this. This is your. This is your wheelhouse. Oh yeah, it is. It is, it is my wheelhouse. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what a wheelhouse is, but it's. I mean, like it. you're already you're already organising it, breaking it down. We got to do this. We want so value values is part one. Mission statement like what like mission objective. What's our purpose? Purpose. What's our purpose? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then what's the and third then, thing? And then th- third part is kind of like the vision. What do we see? So this is the what I've just said. In 2030, uh, okay. we see, you know, this. And that can be about the podcast itself. You know, we see us actually having 20 listeners rather than, than 10. Right. <laughs> or it could be we want to see the world changed in a particular way because of the podcast. Okay. Right? So we want to see um, KFC sales up. Forty percent as a result. You know what I mean? Like it's a net. So effect. it's actual like measurables. Oh yes, measurables. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you said that couple. <laughs> well, oh, I think the... Tim just weed himself with excitement. Then. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> See, <laughs> you and I, we're so good at this. We could, we're, we're, maybe we could license us. We could be consult with other podcasts. Oh yeah. And see. I reckon there's other podcasts. They don't have a 2030 vision and they need one. We, we could just pay each other to be to consult each other. Like <laughs> This is like a – it's a virtuous circle. <laughs> I'll, say, I'll, say, I'll say, girls, I'm bringing in someone to uh, introduce some new ideas. Who is it? Brady. All right. <laughs> All right. We whiteboard some ideas, get them up there on the table, and then uh, say, "Well, this week, kids, I'm uh, I'm off to consult with a <laughs> with another person about that. Who's this, Brady?" Don't <laughs> <laughs> right. no fly over. Oh, oh, I'm in. All nice. right, there you go. Hindsight, twenty thirty, a strategic vision for the Unmade Podcast coming soon. 
Look, I think it's great. On Twitter and Reddit, I'd like to hear people. What would be a sort of like a purpose or vision statement for the Unmade podcast? How would you put it? Uh, um, as pithy as possible and as eloquent and as inspiring as possible. Um, all right. Yeah. Do it. Get in touch. Good idea. Links in the notes. This episode has been brought to you by Hover, the domain name registrar that we know, that we love, that we use for registering domain names. Go to this website, hover.com slash unmade. Easy to use. Search for the domain you want with the uh, suffix you want, you know, your .ninja, your .com, your .net, your .org, whatever you want. See what's available. Register it. Control it. Use it. This usually domain registrars are so confusing and so hard to use. Hover is brilliant, and it is the place where I register and curate and control my domain names. Dot bassoonist. I don't think they've got dot bassoon. Surely, uh, I don't think. Not that oh. if it existed, Hover would have it. I just don't think it exists. What were we going to go for? Was it Brady bassoonist or? Brady the bassoonist. Brady the bassoonist. I wonder if it's available. Uh, I'm guessing mm. it is. Let's have a look. Um, looking good so far. Yes, Brady the bassoonist.com is available. Wow. And they've actually got a dot com sale at the moment. So if I was registering it right now, twelve ninety nine. And you can also get what percentage do you get off if you use our our thing? Hover.com slash unmade? I can't remember. Isn't it 10%? 20%? 10%. 10%. Not Tim's generous 20%. 10% is still pretty good. <laughs> Tim, Tim's just, have it for free, says Tim. No, 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 it's 10%. But 10% is still amazing. And the prices are already incredibly low. For example, I could get Brady the Bassoonist dot online for four ninety nine. There what, we go. What a bargain. What else you got? Brady the Bassoonist dot studio. Let's have a look at some of the more musicy ones. Brady the Bassoonist dot band dot dance. What other dots can you get? Where's music? I always forget about the extra suffixes because, I mean, dot com or dot edu, which is, you know, the education, they're the only ones that I, re- or dot org. I, they're the sort of primary colours that I know about. I always forget there are all these others. What about Brady the Bassoonist dot audio or Brady the Bassoonist dot FM if I was going to start a bassoon playing podcast? Well, that, that, <laughs> that is visionary. Yeah. Well- <laughs> Brady the Bassoonist dot expert dot guru. Got <laughs> the Bassoonist guru. That's another part of a, the strategic planning consulting is they have a really like a cool sort of one word name. And I think the bassoonist is a good one. It's like, hey, who are we getting in to consult on this strategic plan? <laughs> the bassoonist. Oh, Brady, the bassoonist. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> like bassoonist. I have this thing as well when I'm, when I'm running like consulting meetings around the table, only the person holding the bassoon is allowed to talk. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a bassoon. <laughs> Tim, please, please. Jane is holding the bassoon right now. Let's hear what she has to say. <laughs> it's like, could we do this with a pen or a talking stick? No. It must just be a bassoon. Great big bassoon. Anyway, people, as I said, hover.com slash unmade, 10% off. Check them out. You should be registering domains to, you know, take control of your internet presence and the things you're doing. And these guys are great. And they're also great supporters of the show. So thank you very much. Thank you, Hover. Good stuff. Is it now time? For, is it Spoon of the Week yet? Oh, look at you like a child on Christmas morning. <laughs> yes, it is time. Yes. Tim has ventured into the family archives once again and found a souvenir spoon from his mum and dad's collection in a little segment that we like to call... Hang on, let me get the piano ready. <clears throat> Clear my throat. A little section that we like to call... Spoon. Well, Brady, I've got a spoon this morning that I think is carrying quite a bit more authority than many of the other spoons that I've had on Spoon of the Week previously. Yeah. This spoon is a, and I didn't know they did these really, but it is a souvenir spoon from the constabulatory. That is Victoria Police. Isn't it constabulary? Constabulatory. Is it? Is it? I thought it was constabulary. 
Oh, okay. I've just added an extra couple of continents in there. Well, that's that's, that's not written on that's this. How much, you've added extra continents. <laughs> you're going big. Cont- <laughs> you're going big, man. You're going big time today. Oh, you've also cont- completely forgotten how to speak. <laughs> <laughs> this spoon, this, the, the power of the spoon's taken away Tim's ability to say words. <laughs> when I when I go into my spoon of the week lower register, I I have to focus very hard, and I sometimes. <laughs> I love it. Forget some basic skills like how to speak. Your job, administer and lecturer. <laughs> All you have to do is speak. <laughs> you had one job. And a podcaster. You're you're a minister, a lecturer, and a podcaster. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Sorry, come on. Sorry. Get, we've got. I would like you to join me in putting on some sort of uh, constable-like voice for for, yeah. for for this particular spoon of the week hello, because hello, this hello, is hello. a. Hello. <laughs> That's right. That's nice. <laughs> Big bushy moustache I can hear. Mm-hmm. Uh, almost see you with. This is this is for the Victoria Police Force. Now, Victoria is a state of Australia yes. and um, it has a police force. Yes. For those civilians listening overseas. And, um, and uh, the Victorian Police Force is its name. And um, it has, I think, of all... The police forces in Australia, you know, mm. the different states have their different their different forces. I think this has the coolest logo, and um, yeah, basically this spoon is that logo. It's a very simple spoon. The scoopy bit's very basic, although a little bit pointed. It's it would be it's quite pointy in that it would be handy. You know, when you're pushing a spoon into a piece of cake and it's got like a bit of a um, hard icing on it, and you sort of just need to tap in a little bit harder, yeah, yeah. then this would be an ideal spoon for, like, for a vanilla slice, for yeah. instance, or something like that. Or for apprehending a robber. Indeed. indeed. <laughs> That's right. But when you the, – the, the business end is up is up the top. The handle. And, um, yeah. The handle, indeed, mm. and uh, and that's where it's got a very official looking badge, really. Mm, mm. And um, I tell you, it's so official looking that I'm tempted to start carrying it around the spoon <laughs> in my wallet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just flashing it, just knocking on people's doors. <laughs> hey, you got any ID? Just pull out the spoon. <laughs> well, come on then, come in, officer. I'm sorry. How can I help? <laughs> Or just going up to crowds of people and just showing it and going, all right, nothing to see here. Move along now. <laughs> <laughs> or like, or like when you've done something wrong and you're like, you you know, you get called into the boss's office. The boss says, "I'm sorry, Tim. I'm going to have to take your gun and your spoon. <laughs> <laughs> just throw it on the desk." Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, so right. Tim, why do your parents have? a spoon that seems to be commemorating the Victorian police force. Look, I, I've got a few theories. I actually text mum about this, but I haven't heard back from her. But I think it's because there's a couple of connections with the Victorian police force. Firstly, mum's from um, lived for a while very close by to where the academy is for joining the police force and where they train yep. in in Melbourne, in Victoria. And she always made a big deal of that, like, oh, we live right near the police academy, you know, like it was a real, um, a really interesting fact. It's out near sort of Mount Waverley in the suburbs okay. of Victoria. Those of you listening in England, this is very close to where Neighbours is sort of filmed and set yes. um, out that way. Just a little bit of extra sort of context for our non-Australian listeners. Australia has six states and two territories. And Adelaide, where Tim lives and where we we lived, you know, where we both lived for many years, is in South Australia. But Tim was actually born in another state called Victoria and has lived in Victoria for many years at different times. So that's kind of Tim's. Do you call that your second state or your first state? I don't know. But it's it adjoins South Australia, but it's still a bit of a distance to drive from Melbourne. The city of Melbourne is in Victoria as well, by the way. So. Yeah, that it's kind of my first state. That's where I was a kid and where I was born and stuff. Yeah. Do you consider yourself Victorian or South Australian? I probably still consider myself Victorian. Ooh, um, ooh. Although ooh. I, th- yeah. Ooh, wow. Um, oh, I don't know what to think about that. I guess because you th- you connect it to where you were young, you know, yeah. as a kid. But I think I've probably tipped just over to living longer in in South Australia now. Um, yeah. Actually, so. Maybe mm. that will change. Mm, um, interesting, interesting. But carrying this in my wallet's not going to help that. 
because um, <laughs> the base of my authority comes. Look, it's a um, five-pointed star and it's got a beautiful sort of, you know, um, wreath and then it's got the crown on top. Yep. Uh, the crown being obviously the basis of authority in, in us as a Commonwealth country. Mm-hmm. So, so look, I, I love it. I also... It's classy. It's a classy spoon. It is. Yeah. It is a classy spoon, yeah. Mm. Do you know, I, I once, uh, and civilians may not know this, I was very close to joining the police force. Yes. Both in South Australia and Victoria. In fact, I got closer, much, much closer in South Australia. Mm. I... When I was young, I, I wanted to do something for a while before I became a minister. I always kind of knew I wanted to be a, a, like a, a church minister, a Christian minister, but I kind of wanted to do something else for a while first. Yeah. So I applied for the police force in South Australia and I got in yeah. and I was accepted. And I had it was a really interesting process. You meet with a psychologist and you do like tests and you've got to do like a physical test, which is really funny, like running back and forward, which was hard work, and then an obstacle course, which was the most fun part of the whole lot. Yeah. And you're jumping, you know, over a sandpit and climbing a wall and pulling, you know, like a, a, a heavy mannequin across a line and then pull it, picking up a pretend gun and going click, click, click at the end. It was just like in the Police Academy movies. It was really yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. And I passed and I got in. And... I even got like a TB shot, you know, like a injection and all that sort of stuff. Hmm. And uh, and then the government brought in a financial freeze. They stopped taking for funding reasons, yes. other reasons, anyone into the academy. I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got a letter saying, you know, well done, you're in. Basically, find something to do until the government changes its funding arrangements. Yeah. So I was at uni and just kept studying for a while. Then I went and worked at um, sort of food land and just saw bands and relaxed and hung out with you and just sort yeah. of was like, oh, my life felt like it was on hold. You were undercover, like, basically. Basically, that's yeah, right. right yeah. <laughs> In that's your right. mind. <laughs> it's, just... it's like 21 Jump Street. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. It was like this guy's young and cool and yeah. hip like Johnny Depp. That's right. Yeah. So I was, um, I was working undercover. Yeah. Stocking, you know, the shelves at Foodland Supermarket. Unpaid undercover work. <laughs> no, no. Un- unpaid, unauthorised, unknown undercover work. <laughs> unauthorised. That's right. <laughs> you were just gathering intelligence on the uh, eating habits of Brady Harron. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That kept yeah. me busy, I tell you. Yeah. And um, anyway, so then I then I um, got a, a, a letter saying, look, it's been twelve months. Still, we're not taking any new police cadets in, but we need to check your fitness because it's been like a year. And I was oh, like, no. oh, okay. I'm suddenly feeling guilty here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I know. And I'm like, I've been swimming and living life and, you know, walking yeah. around, you know, concert venues. Like, what else, What could I possibly have? So yeah. I went back to do all the same tests again. Yeah. There was no problem with the obstacle course because that was just good fun. Yeah. But that the shuttle run where you've got to run back and forward with like a beep test and it gets faster and faster the tidier you get. Mm. And having passed it last time, I bombed out halfway this time. Oh. And I was like coughing and spluttering and went, oh. And the guy just looked at me and said, no, sorry. And that, that was it. Like that was, <laughs> it was oh. the end of my police journey. And I was like. Oh, so I got another letter saying, yes, unfortunately, you've not made it. Like, it's not like, okay, get fit or we'll train you. Or It was just like totally just a guy with a clipboard in shorts with his socks pulled up just goes, nope, hind, you know, <laughs> unlucky, tried hard. Try, that's what he said, tried hard. Click, <laughs> a stroke of the pen, I was out. Oh. And gosh. Were you upset? Like, did you cry? I didn't cry, no. I just remember feeling so deflated, like, mm. oh, wow, this is like... Oh, well, that's that's suddenly slammed that door shut, hasn't it? Like it was so weird. So who would have thought a year of McDonald's with Brady would? Uh, <laughs> you have to pay such a price. <laughs> Let's try to go <laughs> a year watching go to the movies and yeah, I know. So anyway, so here's the where the Victoria Police Force came in. I thought I'll apply to Victoria. Hmm. So. And it turns out they're very competitive. So they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you should come over here and try out with us. And they have a totally different system. We've got a way better logo. We've got a way cooler logo. And your mum used to live near where the academy is. You've got all sorts of wonderful inside connections. Yeah. So I I went over and their system was totally different. Their system was you turn up with about 100 other people on the first day and you sit in a massive auditorium, a bit like exam day, you know, university or end of high school, Mm. and you basically do like six tests over like maths 
and English and, you know, comprehension and general knowledge. And it seems like it was all maths, to be honest. Hmm. And then at the end of the day, they call out your results. They basically say to a whole room of 100 people, if you hear your name read out, come and stand over here. If you don't, you're welcome to try again in three months. And it's like a total cattle call. And yeah. I was like, oh, oh no. Like, yeah. it's going to come down to maths. Like, great. This is like, like oh, this no. is like how much maths are cops doing that they have to, you know, this, make this the one first thing. And sure enough, my name was not read out. Oh. And I oh. left. And I was oh. like, that was, maybe it was a mistake. Maybe it was a mistake. Did they read out Brady the bassoonist? <laughs> it's my- they need to. I feel like the Victorian police need to bring in Brady the bassoonist to consult on their like yeah. recruitment techniques. Do they tell you where you went wrong? No, no, I didn't see. It, I wonder now if it's a bit like at the start of Men in Black, though. They're not. They don't care about what you get on the test, but they're watching you to see how you sit and you know what I mean. If you cheated, and they've got cameras and they're going, no, oh no, no, it doesn't look like a no, cop. I've realised what it was. I've realised what it is. What? Do you know what it was? The other 99 people in that room were all actors and fakes, right? Yeah. And the whole the whole test was to yes. find out how you deal with rejection. And if you just walk <gasps> out with your tail between your legs, they're like, he's not cop material. But if you would got up oh. and kicked up a fuss and said, no, I want to be a cop and I'm not leaving this room until you make me one, then they'd be like, that's the man we want. Oh. You passed, Hein. You failed. You failed. I'd missed out. You failed because you gave in too easily. It was the same with the running. If you'd turned to that guy in the socks and said, no, I want this. I want this. I'm doing it again. Yeah. <laughs> then they'd be like, that's the metal. That's the man. We Give that man a spoon. Nah. I was a bit hungry, I reckon. And I just, <laughs> yeah, just. <laughs> <laughs> but surely that guy's heading straight I'm, for Maccas. He's police like, material. <laughs> you're like. Oh, this is too hard. I'm going to get a PhD in theology. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe it was like not once did he ask for a donut. (laughs) It's like (laughs) we don't need guys like him here. If only I'd had the spoon. I could have pulled out the spoon and said, well, I'm look, I'm pretty much in already. And he's like, oh. (laughs) (laughs) Third row back, fourth chair to the right. He's got a spoon. Bring him in. You didn't tell us you had a spoon. You don't even have to do the test. Yes, yeah, but we don't. Do, we don't even, you're the you're the commissioner now. You're the. I do like having you keeping the spoon in the car, and when I'm pulled over for speeding, just to pull it over, I'm on the job too. <laughs> Bit of a wink, no worries. Just, just, just a continue little flash on. of the spoon, as you were. Sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> don't blow my cover. Don't blow my cover. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the family don't know. I'm a cop. <laughs> right. do, you, do you regret never being a policeman after trying th- twice at two different police forces? It does. It, again, it still seems like it would have been a fun thing to do for a while, but mm. that's a very trivial way of looking at a very important vocation and mm. job. You know what I mean? Like, mm. I think you. I think the police force. Now I know a little bit more about it, actually. Really, through through other people, it, it's the sort of thing you probably need to really give yourself to, and and um, you know, take as a serious vocation. Whereas I, I did, I did, I was serious about it, but I I really just wanted to, you know, like try it out for a while before I got onto doing the thing I really wanted to do, which is what I've ended up doing, and and mm. is you know exactly what I do. I also wonder if you could have got trapped. You know, you did it for a few years and you got used to having a nice income and, you, you know, you got used to the culture and maybe you would have not got out. Maybe you would have stayed. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, 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 sliding doors, hey? Do you ever look at, like, fat, overweight policemen these days and think, bloody hell? <laughs> <laughs> but they're all good at maths, you see. They would have passed the maths test. <laughs> they all had spoons. <laughs> That's right. That's right. They took their spoons. Yeah. 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 Well, this sort of it, this this kind of leads from spoon of the week into a, into a, a bit of an idea and mm. that I was thinking about because if if I was undercover, right? Like you wouldn't know that I was undercover, right? Like and 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 well, I would because you're hopeless at keeping secrets. It would probably just tell me. <laughs> What if I've got a really exciting thing to tell you? I'm a cop. I'm a cop. My dogs. I'm a cop, man. Oh, God. I, I, um, 
I uh, cause I've been as, as as well as reflecting on the Victorian uh, police voice for voice. <laughs> <laughs> You're on fire, <laughs> it's man. Consonants. <laughs> Constance and its constabulatory <laughs> ships. I, uh, I've been watching um, that French espionage show, The Bureau, right. and and I've I've started reading a book as well called The Frenchman, which is about the same thing. So hmm. I've been thinking about undercover and about spies. Oh, yeah. And I have a question for you, man. Hmm. Hmm. How do you know that I'm not a spy? Well, I don't know for sure. But you wouldn't be a very good person to be a spy because you don't have access to any information that, like, any organisation or government would particularly value. Apart from this, st- the unmade strategic plan. Yeah, well, you know all about <laughs> that. Yeah, so, uh, so I don't know that you're not a spy, but I can't see that you would be a very useful one unless you're, like, like a, you know, just a middleman and someone who works in, like, you know, some secure government location, you know, makes drops in a bin in the parklands that you then pick up and deliver to the Russians. In that case, you are a spy, but you're not kind of cutting edge. You're just kind of, you know, middleman. So I don't I don't know that you're not a spy, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, beginning, to, I'm beginning to wonder now. Well, that's right. See, mm-hmm. every reason that you think of as to why I don't appear to be a spy hmm. is the genius of my alias. It just, it just, all I, all, I, all I have to say is, yes, but that's the genius of my cover. <laughs> the- <laughs> you should have said that. You should have said to the SA police, the fact I can't do the shuttle run is the genius of me as a policeman. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be able to go undercover amongst other people that can't run as fast. <laughs> So what's this? Is is this like some kind of germ of a podcast idea you're you're pitching me here? Well, that's right. I'm thinking about like prove you're not a spy, or if you were a spy, you know what what mm. area, what what's your best undercover? There's something about the alias and choosing a particular life mm. that you know they always talk about it's someone you would never guess in a job, and particularly in the in the bureau, the guy has to sort of learn Arabic in a year, right? Mm. And Others are given incredible tasks, like get a job as a geologist in this firm. Well, you can't fake that. You've got to, you know, learn mm. enough. Well, you can fake it, but you've got to know enough, and it's a massive challenge to cram on it. Well, that usually they would just recruit a geologist to become a spy rather than train a spy to be a geologist, I would imagine. Well, well, I can't disclose our techniques, but... <laughs> <laughs> I can say that we recruit people from all consonants. <laughs> I can't tell you exactly what we do at the constabulatory, but it's very secret. <laughs> it's starting to sound more like the lavatory, isn't it? The, lab, the consta- constabulatory. Uh, yeah. See, I think I'm a better candidate for a spy than you, maybe, because I do travel mm. a lot. For my work, and usually spies mm. travel a lot. Mm. A um, suspicious amount. Hmm. Mm. But maybe I travel so much that I would be too obviously a spy. But maybe that's part of my no. double bluff cover. A podcaster and YouTuber is an unusual cover for a spy in that you're... I'm hiding in plain sight. Ah, that's mm. the genius I mm. see. <laughs> The fact I'm admitting to the fact I'm a spy it makes you just dismiss the fact that I could be a spy, which is the genius of my spy cover. That's right. That's right. Are you always surprised that James Bond uses his real name and just says his name? Yes. Like when he yes, walks that, into places? <laughs> I'm always, I always find that curious that he just calls himself, that like he just says I'm James Bond all the time. Yeah. And even if that's not his real name and it's a cover name, he uses the same cover name all the time. So he is identifying himself. Well, that's right. The baddies would have seen the previous films, sure. <laughs> Although maybe and- <laughs> the, the, they're all so samey, those films, though. The baddies are probably like, oh. Not another James Bond film. They he also dresses in a way th- to attract attention. You know, he doesn't blend in. He always walks in like, look at me walking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> looking really sure, cool. And it's only one, you know, sort of good-looking lady that sort of you know notices him and comes over, and that's the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the person who he needs to get information from. Yeah. Whereas everyone else is ignoring him. Whereas you know what he mean? He does have a little head wiggle. Well, that's right, folks. I've got a new tuxedo on. <laughs> sort of look about Are it. Are you questioning the authenticity of James Bond spy movies? 
but maybe maybe that's the genius of it. You see, mm. <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> wouldn't it be amazing if it turns out that Daniel Craig is a spy? Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's a great idea. Working for like a rival movie production company to steal all the good James Bond ideas. And- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. He's reporting back. Yeah, that's right, on, on techniques and so forth. Do all countries have spies? Like, does the Maldives have spies? <laughs> you just want to go to the Maldives. Yeah. Do, like, do the, Mal- <laughs> do the Maldives the have spies that go around the world to try and find out information for the Maldives? The, the, well, I'm sure they... I'm sure that, Well, you you do go there suspicious of I have to say. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> That's when I report back. I've always assumed you've got your, like, hiding your documents there or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a spy for the Maldives. Every year or two I go back and report to the government about what's been happening in Bristol. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, anyway, um, what we didn't do is we got a little bit sidetracked by your kind of half idea there and we didn't give out our spoon of the week because obviously Patreon supporters... Yes, yes, Patreon yes. supporters are, are eligible to win a spoon randomly chosen this week. How are we going to choose it this week? What I've done this week, I've, I've, I've put the names of all of our patron supporters on Donuts. Yeah, and um, I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to eat all the donuts, and the one that's left is the winner. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I've actually been. I've been at this already, and I'm. I'm up to this one. Right. What's the name on there? Can you read that? Is that the winner? The one written on that donut. All right. In icing. Let, it's a bit hard to read. Let me have a look at it. It's all with Tim's fingerprints all over it. But I think that says. Jaron from Texas. Jaron? Yaron? Jaron from Texas. Oh. You have won an unmade podcast uh, souvenir spoon, and that will be sent to you in the post at some time in the very near future. Congratulations, Jaron. Congratulations. What a big day in Texas. They need some good news down there. Thank struggling. you. Yeah, they, do, they need. They do, yeah. Yeah. And you too can... Perhaps win a spoon and be part of the, the extra hijinks that happen on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash unmadefm. It's another way to support the show. We really appreciate our Patreon supporters. And we appreciate our non-Patreon supporters. We appreciate everyone listening. Do subscribe. Leave comments. Tell your friends. Like, anything to help, you know, grow the show is much appreciated. I always hear, like, other podcasts say that. They always say, you know, help us grow the audience and think, well, what? Why do I care if the audience grows? You know, I'm listening and enjoying mm. it. That's enough. Mm. But growing the audience is important because it keeps the show alive. It keeps us. It ke- lets us keep making it. And you know, you know, <laughs> you've already heard about our strategic vision, so you know that's not going to be any help. So all, all we can do <laughs> is try and get more listeners to stay alive. <laughs> that's the thing we're missing from our strategic vision. Yeah, actual <laughs> strategies. <laughs> There's nothing strategic about it. <laughs> No. Anyway. Uh, anyway, look, I have got a good Patreon idea here, but we probably haven't got time today. So, uh, so let's save that one for next week. Did you have any secret words you had to smuggle into the show? Or oh, damn it! Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I'm not joking. I have them written here, and I was gonna do it. I don't know why. I've got your dumb list of strategy words listed all the way underneath them, and I read every single one of them out except for scarf and elephant, which was <laughs> <laughs> scarf and elephant. Yes. All right. They are the secret words that Tim was asked by his daughters <laughs> that he allegedly loves to smuggle into the can- show, <laughs> and that he forgot yet again. <laughs> I'm such a good spy. I'm so good at, like, code words and remembering important (laughs) words. Uh, Do you get told off for forgetting these all the time or is it just, like, accepted now? They literally say, well, why bother? (laughs) Because (laughs) we... And they literally, like, like said uh, this time, we may as well give them to Brady. And I was... And I said, well, actually, that's a pretty good idea, actually. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That would be a much more efficient way of doing it. That's what they should do if they actually want to get them smuggled into the show properly and not just, like, disappointingly tagged on at the end of each episode. It is a nice way to round up. It is sort of um, the finale, isn't it, really? It's it's become a bit of an institution. (laughs) I was hoping you were going to say the word was constabulatory. (laughs) 